welcome back to Croydon College. Uh, we're here once again with you for our, se our final series of webinars this week, uh, where we're talking to you about the role of apprenticeships uh, and giving you some advice and guidance about how you could become an apprentice and what that would mean to you uh, and your career. Um, we're here, as I say, courtesy of Croydon College, and today we're talking about uh, becoming a learning skills teacher. And in addition to that, also looking at what you might need uh, to know in terms of becoming a teaching assistant level three. Uh, so we are going to hopefully hear from some of you today. Uh, those of you that are watching live, you do have the opportunity uh, to talk to us or at least to ask your questions. Um, and it's really important that we do try and address as many of your questions as possible. Uh, so just for those of you that are watching live, just to point out that on your taskbar at the bottom of your screen, you do have a Q&A button. Uh, and if you click that button, that will enable you to type a question. So if someone's asking something and you want to ask a further question, uh, you can put your own uh, question into that, that, that bar and then I will ask that on your behalf. Um, we also have a chat facility. So if you open up the chat function on your screen, uh, that will enable you to make some comments or just talk more generally uh, about any thoughts and concerns that you have. And all of our panellists um, this afternoon will be able to see both of those functions and can also respond to you directly uh, via those functions. So hopefully this afternoon we're going to maybe dispel some myths about being an apprentice, apprentice um, and also give you some information about what next step you need to take if this is a, a, a career that you're thinking of going into now just to say that this week we've we've covered all manner of subjects everything from hot construction engineering hospitality and leisure IT digital business finance and this is the last one but all of those videos are available on the college's YouTube channel so you can actually go back and have a look at any of those if there are other subjects uh, that you're interested in now today uh, I'm joined by uh, a great panel of people from the college who are going to give you insight into this whole subject um, and just to quickly introduce them to you before I invite uh, them to speak. Uh, I've, I have with me today Gail. Gail uh, is uh, the lady that's going to talk to you in a little while about the actual process, uh, what, what qualifications you need, um, what support you'll be given uh, and if you were to join Croydon College as an apprentice she'd be playing a key role uh, with you. Um, as with Lashanda. Lashanda is a previous apprentice um, and we're delighted that she completed her apprentice successfully and then has gone on to a full-time employment with the college and Lashanda is the lady who will talk you through the application process uh, so again if you do make an application uh, Lashanda would be the lady that you'll be talking to and then also with us today is one of the tutors from uh, the college that particularly looks after this this course uh, and that's Camilla so hi to Camilla um, and Camilla's going to talk to you in a little bit more detail about being um, a learning skills teacher and exactly what we mean by that because actually what we mean is it's a qualification that someone can have when you're already trained in your industry uh, and you want to be able to go on and pass that knowledge on to others such as apprentices uh, you might be able to then assess their abilities uh, and also really great that we've got Ellie with us Ellie Howlett um, uh, Ellie uh, is based at Colston College part of Croydon College uh, and is actually undertaking this course at the moment uh, in terms of being able to become an English language assessor uh, so it'd be great to hear from Ellie about her previous experience, what's brought her to do this particular role and how she's hoping to be able to use this to forward her career uh, in the future. So we'll be talking to all those shortly. Um, but first of all, I wanted to introduce you um, to the head of the apprenticeship program uh, here at Croydon College. Um, and uh, I'm going to introduce you to John McLean. And, and John, um, before I, I come over to you, just check that you can see my screen. I can. Um, yeah. My screen, right, that's lovely. Thank um, you. So um, before I come over to you, I just wanted to just have a, a quick chat about um, the government's um, announcements that were made, I think it was on Wednesday now, uh, good news in terms of the apprenticeship sector, uh, because as I understand it now, uh, the government is giving businesses more money to encourage them <coughs> to take on apprenticeships. What, what do you think that's going to mean uh, to the college and the, and the facility that you can offer? And what, what, what have you seen happening so far since Wednesday? Yeah, I, I think it's a tremendous initiative and it'll give a great boost to apprenticeships and a great boost to the, the, the associated industries and the local companies within Croydon. Um, so far, um, 
I've had numerous phone calls uh, last night and this morning, and, and my colleague Lashonda, as she'll say, has had over 40 fresh applications for apprenticeship since it was announced, which is qu- quite dramatic. Quite dramatic. It's really good, which is what it's all about. Uh, and hopefully all those people will take advantage of the series of webinars to have a look and see what might uh, take their fancy in terms of... Yeah friendships might be offered. I guess what we've done over the last week is really try to unpick some of those myths around apprenticeships and I think also demonstrate that actually you don't really need to know what it is you want to do where apprenticeship is concerned because often you can come in at, at an entry level in a fairly you know um, simple uh, subject just like business, uh, business finance or office administration and from there you can move on into all sorts of other careers through the apprenticeship program. Um, so, John, just before we move into the specifics of being coming a learning skills teacher, I think you're just going to give us a general view, uh, yep. overview of, of, of what it is to be an apprentice here at Croydon College. Sure. Yeah. Hi, everyone. As Catherine said, I'm John McLean. I'm head of apprenticeships for Croydon College. And I'm hopefully going to give you a brief overview that will cover who, who's an apprenticeship for. Uh, again, as Catherine said, dispel some rumours and myths. Uh, basic eligibility you need to become an apprentice and hopefully at the end provide uh, some uh, advice and guidance if you like through a QA and a session. Okay. What, what is an apprenticeship? Well it allows you to gain uh, the technical and functional knowledge as well as the accredited uh, experience and it's conducted within that specific job with your employer. You're also developing the necessary professional skills uh, for, for that job. The good thing about apprenticeships is you actually earn a wage whilst you, while you are uh, fulfilling your apprenticeship with the employer, as well as the, the, the qualifications you need. I'd, I'd, I'd like to sh- stress at the, the, this point that apprenticeships are no longer j- just for uh, what we consider young people between the ages of 16 and 24. The, the modern apprenticeship is open to all ages from 16 to, to 64. Um, you can change careers, you can enter, uh, be fresh into a new industry, or you, perhaps you, you might be with that company, you might have been with them for 10 years or something, you've, and you, you wish to be upskilled or your employer might think you, uh, you, you need upskilled or want to be upskilled, I should say. And apprenticeships now cover a, a huge range of the, these options for you personally. The, the, uh, the, the, there's more than 170 different industries covering over 1,500 job roles within apprenticeships now. Okay. And as I said, employers can offer apprenticeships to, to new people coming into their business who've never done or changed, the fact that they change for whatever reason, or to grow talent from among a new and current employees. The focus for an apprenticeship is to equip you with the necessary skills and knowledge required for that specific job role with your employer, and it will enable you to progress. Thanks, John. Um, Just, I suppose, to stress that this afternoon in particular, this session, I guess this is very much about upskilling. This is for people who have a training qualification, sorry, have a qualification within their particular industry already. Um, Would that be fair to say? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, that's great. Um, So uh, that's good to get that general overview um, from John. Um, I'm going to invite um, uh, Camilla uh, to give us a few words um, now. Um, Camilla, just give me a second to swap my screen over. Just give us a bit of of background. How long have have you been uh, with college whilst I do this? So uh, basically, my name is Camilla Borowiszniewska. I joined Croydon College in 2013. Um, as a learning support assistant. Previously, however, I used to be an ESOL student in that college, so I have my personal uh, feelings attached to Croydon College. And then in 2015, I took Diploma in Education training course, obviously in my beloved college, Croydon College. Uh, Once I graduated, I soon after start work with apprenticeship team Um, Two years ago, I started to work with apprenticeship team and uh, I would never even imagine that I will be delivering the same qualification that I just completed not that long ago. So, um, yes, that's my story. 
just goes to show, doesn't it? You see where yes. these things can where these things can lead. Uh, it comes okay, to some goals. I've got your uh, presentation up, so um, uh, far away. All right. So basically, I'm going to talk about um, overview of three phases of apprenticeship um, scheme, um, the debt qualification, and the key components, um, and um, assessment themes assessment cycle and endpoint assessment because uh, as apprenticeship apprenticeship is a whole program whereas the the that the diploma in education and training it's like a common teaching training uh, qualification only and i think it's more beneficial personally uh, to do a level five apprenticeship because it gives you more um more possibilities, more skills in a job, because quite often you will have your own agenda and your own um, experience from all the field, perhaps, and you want to pass the skills to someone else. And I think it's really important to, you know, highlight that uh, it's not only teaching uh, qualification attached, it will be the whole package, really. So if you will move into the next slide. Um, here is a, I know it's quite, Part, but it's an overall um, flow chart how the the whole program will look like so um, you will have uh, on program uh, period so um, we will look into your of the job training we will look on your qualification your you should have a level two English and maths qualification because it's really important especially if you want to work in a, a educational field then obviously we're going to deliver um, level five diploma education and training and level two safeguarding, which I think, especially now, will be very beneficial for our students or even for uh, those who will decide to work as a teachers or trainers or assessors. And then uh, we will move to endpoint assessment when you will have um, professional discussion you will have online presentation and two teaching observations. So alongside uh, the whole program is structured that you will get used to observation and observations are not there to demotivate you. Observations are there to uh, give you more opportunities to improving your, your skills um, agenda. And um, if we're talking about uh, professional discussion, this is again something that you may show uh, the components of the whole um, of the whole program. Uh, if you move to the next slide, this I is going to be a content. Can I just ask you a couple of questions about this slide? Yes, um, of course. Just first of all, so the on-program period to gateway, that's, that's what you do before you officially start the course. Is that yes. right? And the course yes. is two years. So it's so, a minimum of two years. Yes. So basically uh, what it means that if you do have functional skills, uh, English and maths level two or GCSE grade C or above or grade four current one, then obviously uh, you might be exempt from this. However, we need to have a full certification. So diagnostic assessment or initial assessment will not be enough. Yeah. So if you don't have those qualification, obviously they will be attached into the gateway. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And and then this isn't. Uh, maybe you're going to come on to this, but you're not in college for two years because presumably you get on and do your own job in the industry. No. Um, this is well. The the whole. It's not obviously twenty twenty four uh, months throughout the the whole year. We are running three hours session per week in college. And then it's your own practice. However, you need to have a secure. 100 teaching hours yeah okay. so this is really important because this is part of the other component that we you just seeing so that stands for diploma in education and training and these are the units that we the qualification will cover so it focuses literally on uh, all of the theory and the background the researchers um based on to not base on, but to make sure that we will uh, give you the theoretical foundation to become a great or even outstanding teacher. And um, these are carefully selected um, units 
from uh, in consultation with HE because level five goes under the HE higher education. And these ones, we decided that they are the most important, the most foundational units for every single field you want to do. Because remember that it's diploma in education and training. So again, if you want to teach plumbing, these units will help you how to be outstanding a plumbing teacher. Or if you want to teach health and social care, these units will help you how to uh, teach your students teach young people to become an outstanding health and social practitioner. So your experience, your personal experience and your personal qualification with components of that and the um, apprenticeship scheme around it will help you to be more confident of what you're doing or what you're planning to do. So it will help you to grow really in a confidence to become a teacher as well. Uh, we can move to the next slide. So basically, um, the whole aim is, the whole units, as I said, those that you've seen on the previous slide, will um, highlight the fact that you will be responsible, you will have a responsibility for delivering current, relevant and inspiring and engaging lessons. So um, again, we're coming back to the point that you need to have a secure 100 hours of teach 100 teaching hours throughout those two years. So it's not within a one year, it should be spread out evenly, roughly 50-50 for each academic year. Because on that case, you know, you will grow on that. You, it will give you opportunity to uh, build up the skills, the knowledge of your own vocation, as well as the um, skills to become a good teacher. And, um, these are the, comf the, the components of apprenticeship scheme. Uh, the main one are knowledge, skills, and behavior. And these are the uh, criteria that you will be assessed uh, at the end of uh, endpoint assessment. So at the end of the whole qualification, uh, of the whole program, although you will have com complete the qualification where you can take it with you, you will also be uh, assessed against those criteria. And I think the combination of behavior skills and knowledge will show thoroughly the professionalism around your vocation, the professionalism of you being a teacher or you being a trainer, because it's really important. One thing is to know uh, what, you, what you want to pass. The other way is how to do it and how to uh, become very professional and have and maintain a good relationship uh, on with the professional matters. Okay, okay we can go. And um, these are the um, components of the knowledge, skills, and behavior that you will be assessed at the end. So once you gain your qualification, a level five diploma, then you will move to that endpoint assessment gateway. And these are the criteria that external assessor will come and see whether you can plan a learning. And if you will look carefully, actually knowledge, skills and behavior, they are overlapping each other. So for each knowledge, you pretty much have a skills and behavior. So as you've seen on the previous slide, everything compounds one, uh, one element. Um, yeah, these are the... Um, assessment themes, but this is more for the endpoint assessment. Um, the um, external assessor will have a look on your, how you develop your skills for work and life, how you're removing barriers for learning. So then again, they're going to check how great you are as a teacher, whether you are tackle uh, inequalities, especially nowadays, it's very important. Uh, whether you are planning lessons for the sake of planning it or whether you are planning to make sure that your students are engaged, whether you are supporting English and maths, whether you are embedding pro or promoting British values or whether you're just using uh, a lesson plan as a tick box. So we can move to that. Um, obviously, on your way, on your path, it might be a lot of doubts, it might be a lot of hiccups, 
But then again, I think you need to aim for the, the end game and you need to ask yourself, are you willing to sacrifice yourself? Because it's very, I'm not going to lie, level five qualification as a dead, they are quite intense and quite demanding. So you need to make up your mind whether you, you really want to be a trainer or teacher and pass your skills to someone else. But I think it's really, really worth it. I wish I would go through the apprenticeship route rather than just the qualification. So that's my view on that. And yes, there will be challenges. And you've got some links here where you can find more about the um, qualification and the months how to become a learning a skills teacher right. and that will be it that's fantastic thank you very much um i know we you brought along with you today as we mentioned earlier ellie uh, ellie uh, is doing this course uh, and it'd be really good to hear from you it seems like it's quite involved um but maybe uh, you can just shed some light on it uh, from your own personal experience so ellie tell us a little bit about your experience you just a need to unmute yourself, Ellie. I don't know whether we can unmute. Yes, it's done. Lovely. Yeah. Um, I started the course um, this year in February. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and um, I, I decided to go for it because um, I was working as a learning facilitator for approximately three years. And I enjoyed the role so much, and I was not just supporting the ch the students. I was really getting involved in their learning, and I was really sort of assisting the teacher. But if I saw gaps in or any students or any learners that I think weren't understanding, that was I was passionate about that. I felt that no student, no learner, should sit in a class and not understand. And mm -hmm. I said, you know. And I, so I did a lot of one-to-ones. I did a lot of small groups, but I was still said, no, I want to go a bit deeper than that. So that is when I was inspired to go further and investigate and find out about the learning skills teacher. So that's when, that's when I decided to embark on it. And not only that, when my teachers and practitioners saw my level of involvement with the students, uh, we had students who were really sort of said, I can't do this, I'm not going to do it, miss. And um, and I'd work with them. I said, you can achieve them. You have to raise their self-esteem, let them know that, that they're sitting in a class. And I used to say that I value you for the fact that you're here. You know, you've got a goal and I'll help you achieve that goal. And then I'd work with them and then they'd pass. And sometimes teachers would say to me, oh, they're not going to, they're not going to. But I always had faith. And I think that every learner who walks through the doors can pass and will pass if they have the support. That's great. So you started in February. Uh, I think your your specialism is sort of English language, isn't it? Is that yeah, right? That's my, that's my specialist area, English language. So you're going through this for the next 24 months or now probably less than that. Um, yeah. And then what, what happens at the end of that? What will you then do with that qualification? Well, I'll, at the end of it, I hope to be taken on as a permanent teacher at Paulsdale College. Right. Yes, right. in the English in the English department. I've worked with them for three years. I've got to know the team, you know, and I feel really at home there and really valued, you know, so and they have called upon me to help out in areas and I feel really valued there. So yeah. if the opportunity comes up, I will work there. Yes. Right. Wonderful. Okay. I'm gonna pass over to Gail. Um uh, I'm gonna find your slides first, Gail. So uh, bear with me whilst I do that. Um uh, Gail, just tell us a little bit about your role whilst I find these slides. Okay, know. well, I've worked Croydon College for, uh, for over about well, over ten years now, um, and I work in the apprenticeship department. Um, I manage some of the assessors, um, Camilla being one of them, um, and we offer a number of apprenticeships within mm. teaching. And um, we're doing the learning and skills teacher, and now we, do, we also do the teacher training level three. But I'm just going to give you an overview of sort of apprenticeships and how they work. Right, lovely. Found your slide, so over to you. Right, okay. Right, so we're going to do a, a, an apprenticeship overview and oh, go back one, I mean, a minute. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Got me. Right, I'm just going to right. We're going to do the overview of the apprenticeship. Going to see how it's delivered, what courses are available within the teaching area, and um, and and where you can find the standard. Right. Okay. So the overview. Um, apprenticeships are a form of education. They're different from going to school or from going to university, but they are classified as full-time education. Um, they are in. There are industry recognised and and provide a path for future development and career opportunities. A lot of the new standards have been developed by um, big companies and small companies around what the industry really wants. So they're really seen as very robust these days. An apprentice will work, um, will work between 30 to 40 hours um, on a basis of usually four days at work and one day in training. Um, but this will depend on your course. Sometimes it's half day training, but you always have to have a whole day, not necessarily in college, but to perform other duties of, of around learning as well. Within the new apprenticeship standards, there's three areas, as Camilla actually just explained, there's skills, knowledge and behaviour. The skills are obviously on the job, what you're doing all the time in um, practically the knowledge is what we teach you at the college so it's why you need to do something for example um when you're making a cake why you need to beat the eggs robustly um, and behaviors are hopefully you come with a good, uh, good set of behaviors um, and through the qualification we hope we ha hope to enhance these as well okay so there are areas where you can get a high level qualification so within the learning and skills um, training, for example, you have to do a what we call a debt qualification, which is the um, Department of Education training uh, qualification, so either proper qualified teacher status training uh, a qualification. Um, the can well, obviously, this is a level five qualification, but we also do do a level three t uh, teacher teacher. Uh, support role as well. So apprenticeships have an endpoint assessment. An endpoint assessment is what probably you're used to when you did your GCSEs or your O levels or um, A levels. You have at, you have at the end of the course um, an exam. And um, within in apprenticeships, it's usually um, consists of multiple choice. Um, a professional discussion so you sit down with your endpoint assessor and you talk about your job so you really you really go into your detail of how you carried out your day-to-day -day tasks and you, and what they want to hear is examples of, of how of how you did things um, and really you can sell yourself by, by talking to the endpoint assessor and how well you've come and how much you've learned in the year or two years on the on the apprenticeship um, yeah, apprenticeship delivery. So as I said, it's uh, most most apprenticeships are classroom based, but they're not all. Linked to the ter the learning and skills teaching apprenticeship is classroom based, so you will be expected to attend college on a weekly basis. It's half a day, but you're also given half a day then um, by your employer. Not maybe not the same half day, but you should be given another four hours um, to complete assignments, to do research, to go to the library um, and do it sort of, you know, finding books and things. So you, it should be a day a week. Um, we use a blended um, teaching um, approach these days. So you will, might be doing some online teaching. Um, you might be looking at um, PowerPoints. Um, I know Camilla sets things on something called a Padlet. Um, so there's, it's, a, it's a varied approach, um, but we'd like to think that it fits everyone and we can adapt it to suit people. Um, you will be given lots of exam preparation. So at the end, you will be given practice discussions, um, lots of time to demonstrate your practice in the classroom. I think you do observations. So you will have to do lots of observations. Um, so... As you have to do observations, you will be, you will be getting visits from your assessor, um, and obviously we will give you individual support and guidance. Um, uh, Croydon College is very lucky to have at the moment to work based learning um, learning support assistants that can give you extra support. So if you're struggling with maybe something like your referencing, then we can get them to help and go through that with you. Right, and this is the link to where you can find the Learning and Skills Apprenticeship Standard. And you can find every standard that's going, actually, on this link. Um, it has a search facility, so you would just type in Learning and Skills um, and it would come up. And it would give you then all the knowledge, skills and behaviours that they're looking, that you have to 
um, complete and also an in-depth assessment plan of everything that you will have to complete within your apprenticeship. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Um, so uh, obviously, as we've said uh, in many uh, throughout this week, many times throughout this week, although we're talking specifically about learning skills at the moment, um, we are as a college able to offer all sorts of manner uh, of apprenticeships. I think as John mentioned in his, his, his introduction, uh, around about 170 in total, I believe. Um, so there really is something for everybody. Um, so you know, do take a look back at some of the other videos uh, if you want further information. So I'm going to just ask now Lashanda to talk us through uh, the application process. Hi, Lashanda. Hello. Um, so my name is Lashanda. I am the Assistant Skills Advisor at Reading College, and I'm just going to go through the application process, just explain how to apply for any of our apprenticeships. So in order to apply for any of our apprenticeship job vacancies, you must apply either on the Croydon College website or you can apply through the National Apprenticeship website. Please ensure when you send in your application that you respond to each question in as much detail as possible. And if you can, please send an updated version of your CV. And if you would like any help or support before you apply, please don't hesitate to email us. So once you have received your application and it has been reviewed, you'll be shortlisted and then we'll go through a short phone interview. Once that phone interview has been conducted, you will be invited to the college or you'll be invited online to a an initial assessment, which is where you'll be asked to present some forms and I mean, present some documents and you'll be asked to fill out a form. Um, during this time, you may also be asked to do a math and English assessment if you're a person who may not have your math and English GCSEs at a C or, or above, or if you don't have functional skills or equivalent. After your initial assessment, we will send your CV and cover letter over to the employer. The employer has to get back to us and confirm whether or not they'd like to interview you. Once they have confirmed that, we will arrange that interview for you. And please be aware that if you are selected for an interview, we also offer mock interviews. So if you do need any help, please don't hesitate to ask. And after that interview, the employer has the final decision of whether or not they'd like to hire you as an apprentice. But please also be aware that if you are not successful in getting that apprenticeship opportunity, we will try and support you as much as we can and let you know about any other similar opportunities that we have. So whenever you are ready to apply, please use some of these useful tips. Um, ensure that you attach an updated version of your CV when applying. Um, if you're a person who may not have a lot of work experience within that field, um, please write a cover letter just to support your application so you can show how passionate you are about this apprenticeship role. If you are selected for an interview, um, we would and would like some interview preparations, we would help you with that and to make sure that you have an appropriate email address. Um, maybe your first name, last name, and a hotmail.com. And make sure your contact details are on your application. And this is our weekly updated vacancy list. So this will show on the Croydon College website all of the apprenticeship job vacancies that we currently have advertised at the moment. We do have a teaching assistant apprenticeship role, so if you do have any questions about that, please go on the Croydon College website. But if you are interested in doing a teaching level five, you just have to directly email us because it is a slightly different process. Right, thank you very much, Sandra. Um, Gail, can I just come to you around this uh, teaching assistant role? Because I guess uh, that is, uh, you know, a very common role. We all know what a teaching assistant is and uh, they've become more and more popular, haven't they, in, in recent years and a very important part of any school and any classroom. Um, so how does that differ from what we've been talking about in terms of a level five and, uh, and what are the sort of entry requirements for that? The uh, level three teaching assistant, uh, usually it's things five GCEs or equivalent. Um, if you haven't got your maths and English, um, we will upskill you into your level two functional skills, maths and English. Um, uh, what else? Um, it's really an entry role into teaching and learning, uh, to be fair. It's, it's if you want to be a support teacher within the classroom. Um, some people start off as a support or training support teacher and then work their way up, decide that we're like, going to teach training. Yeah. Um, and then move to like either level 
drive learning and skills teacher or we're going into doing proper teacher training so it could be a good role for someone that maybe is in between thinking about you know yeah. want to go to university uh, what they actually want do they want to go into teaching it would be a good way of of testing yeah. the water if you like to see yeah. uh, whether in fact uh, they want to do that and Camilla you want to come in here Yes, because um, I'm lucky enough to deliver also supporting teaching and um, learning level two and teaching assistant uh, free qualification and course. I'm very lucky to be part of it, thanks to Gail. And uh, currently, those who have finished supporting teaching and learning level two, uh, I've got three of my students right now, they are applying to university. So I would say, you know, it's like a climbing ladder. You will start from perhaps level two, moving to level three if you want. But then again, I think the reason why I will choose, um, you know, I used to work in a teaching assistant myself as well. And then I become a learning support assistant in Croydon College. Uh, and, um, you know, I started from the theoretical side of view, but I had no qualification. Whereas this is a perfect combination of gathering your theoretical side alongside with your training. And I think it's really important because the employers later on, if you're going on the further stages of your life, they are looking more for experience alongside with a qualification. And I think it's a very good combination that you have two in one. It's like buy one, get one free, really. Mm-hmm. And I would, I would strongly recommend this route because, as I say, I didn't have a chance to, to do it like that. I had to learn hard way. Whereas, yeah. you know, I will always encourage whoever to start with something that gives you qualification alongside with the practice. But at the same time, it's not an easy route. You need to, you need to be committed to, to merge those two routes together. So you need to be certain that you say really want to do it. Mm. But at the same time, I think it's a really good combination. And am I right in thinking these days to get in to be a teaching assistant, you do need some sort of this formal training? Yes, because you see, when I used to be a teaching assistant uh, 14 years ago in a primary school, there weren't any qualification required. When, whereas now, it doesn't really matter which website you're going to open, there is a minimum of level two supporting teaching and learning alongside with English and maths. And it's really, really important because now it's statutory to have an English and maths, even mm. in a primary school. Yeah. So and I would say, you know, this is a good, good starting point, whatever you want to progress or even stay as a teaching assistant. But on there, it's a lo- lot of routes as yeah. well. We can see from that uh, vacancy list that that particular vacancy, which is there at the moment. So there is a, currently a level two support teaching so that's very much the entry level to be a teaching assistant gets you on the first rung of the ladder um, yep. however the supported learning and teaching qualification or apprenticeship is being stopped and it's going to be starting at, at level three teaching assistant right so, yeah that's just yeah, about to be finished the level two yeah, yeah so they will start at level three so, and a level two is gcse is that right and a level three is yeah, yeah. This is yes. a sort of equivalent to A level. Is, exactly, yeah. It, it has to be um, equivalent. Level, level three, personally, when I look, you know, as I say, I'm privileged to, to deliver both of the qualification. And I think level three, again, gives you better opportunity to gather the experience alongside, uh, you know, being employed. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you're working under specific direction of the employer. Yes. So it's like, you know, often when you start there, you have a quite secure route of the employability at the same time because they wouldn't invest money just to let you go. And quite often, if you, very, if you feel comfortable in a specific school, quite often you will stay for at least three or four years mm-hmm. to, you know, build up your experience and then move on. So I think it's really good uh, opportunity. I've got a, a question come in from someone who's uh, watching, which is great to hear from them. Um, they're saying, does the application pro- process require a personal statement or is there something, anything similar to this? Um, and what would this need to include in any tips? They're saying that their background, they don't have any background in teaching. And it's only recently um, before December that they were able to actually sit in some classes to get, I suppose, that just in initial experience. Um, so, you know, what, what advice can you give? Presumably this course would be fine for this person. They don't have to have had an experience. Gail, do you want to come in here? 
Uh, no, they don't have to have any teaching experience at all. We've had quite a number of apprentices recently go doing the level two, starting the level two. Um, absolutely no experience, come from different backgrounds, coming from straight from school. Um, I think we've got a young lady who, who's doing the level three teaching assistant and she's come straight from school um, and we've put her on for two years to give her that extra sort of confidence building, really. Um, so no, no formal experience. <laughs> subject of the personal statement uh, I mean I think Lashanda you mentioned that they obviously they need to give a CV and and ideally presumably a personal statement in this case might be a cover letter might it to explain yeah yeah so that cover letter is just going to be sent over to the employer some employers may want someone who has a little bit more experience but if you have that cover letter it just shows your passion for that apprenticeship role some some employers that have like one position and you don't know how many other applicants are going for that apprenticeship it's just a way of making your application stand out yeah. and i think that's key isn't it um i always think that with any job application uh, if you can use the cover letter to really uh, as you say get your personality out explain what your interests are what you've been involved in uh, uh, actually that's often what would set someone apart from another person uh, down to their cover letter so i guess the the advice and guidance to this particular person is uh, you know just make it as personal as possible uh, be passionate in it uh, put over exactly why it is you want to uh, be considered for this very vacancy um, because that's the first thing that the employer the school in this case I, I guess would be looking at because I think it's keen to stress again that it is the employer's decision it's the school's decision it's not yeah. something that you as a college are going to make a decision on um, and I guess also just to reiterate Lashanda what you've said is that there is you know a whole team of people hopefully this has been demonstrated this afternoon at Croydon College that are here to help and advise uh, and get and help you through the process uh, so mm -hmm. yes you do need to log on to actually register yourself as wanting to be an apprentice that's an official thing you have to do online but after then you can pick up the phone uh, if we weren't in the current situation you could walk into the college but that's why we're holding these online uh, presentations uh, and I should also stress to anyone that's watching that uh, the college is also uh, operating a, a weekly advice clinic uh, online so actually every Wednesday afternoon between two and four you can log into a platform like this uh, and there'll be somebody waiting to have a chat with you about anything that you might want to ask whether it be sec sector related or it might be something to do with finance or it might be something to do with special needs uh, and access whatever your query is about whether Croydon College is the right college for you uh, and whether whatever the course is that you might be looking at Wednesday afternoons between two and four uh, you can log in uh, and and we'll be sharing that information with you uh, after this event uh, and next week it's my turn so if some people uh, have uh, have more questions uh, about um, teaching assistant free or um, uh, apprenticeship level five more than welcome because I'm going to be there from two to all four great I've got another question and um, this is from someone who's currently in employment um, how do I apply and register so I'm guessing this is in relation to the level five uh, okay. Is it something you would do independently to your employer or has it worked? Shanda, is that something you can? If you're a person who already has an employer, just email us and we'll figure out the rest of the way. <laughs> okay, so basically so I'm interested, uh, you'll pick it up, you'll tell them and work out whether, and, and often is that a case of you then you know, making a representation to the employer to say that there's been an interest would they be willing to support? Because they would then have to support the employee through this process. Yeah, so it's just more of us getting in contact with the employer and just explaining more of the employer side of things and then getting the registration with the college and starting, trying to get you started in classes. But if you already have an employer, just email us. Okay, and John, do you want to come back in here? Just on this subject? Yes, yes. No, it's as simple as that. Yes, we welcome it. We have a, a general uh, email address that uh, Lashonda and our colleagues will pick up, and it's it's quite simply apprenticeships at croydon.ac.uk. Great. Um, and that will go straight to Lashonda and our colleagues. So just to pick up on that from an employer perspective, the employer, this, this is not going to cost the employer. Uh, because you're already in employment, they're already paying your salary, and the cost of the apprenticeship would be picked up presumably through the apprenticeship program. So there's I, no there's no disadvantage to the employer. No, no. The reason why no. 
an employee should be concerned about approaching their, their no employee. not at all not at all yeah okay uh, ellie you had your hand raised did you want to come back in Yes, I'd just like to say that I'm doing currently doing a level five diploma and I'd just like them to know that you do get a lot of support and we have some very good um, teachers, practitioners who are very supportive and, you know, any area where you have any weaknesses, they will support you and resource, they, they, they fully resource, you get the resources you need and any sort of um changes that need to be adapted to support your learning they are always there so it and this course is structured really well to suit the individual learning needs and every learner's need yes very clear delivery i think that's a really good testimony actually and that's probably a really good place to finish uh because you know this is about working together um you're not in this on your own uh Croydon college is here you can see we've got a great group of people who are obviously very passionate about what they do uh, it's about working collectively with you in what in in an individual way to suit your needs um, uh, and I know they would all be delighted to pick up with you uh, individually and the next step following this afternoon is that the Shanda will be reaching out um, to anyone that has logged on this week uh, to check that first of all you've had everything that you need whether you've got other questions and obviously to helpfully encourage you into the role of being an apprentice we know apprenticeships are hot on the agenda uh, at the moment and it's a very important time uh, and a really good way of ensuring that you are skilled for the future uh, and certainly there is some uncertainty about that future so let's all do what we can uh, to make sure that we've all got the skills that we need moving forward so i do hope you've enjoyed uh, this presentation this afternoon it will be available on the croydon croydon college youtube channel that's a bit of a mouthful on a friday afternoon um but it will be there for you to watch um at any time and you can pass it on to others as well but for now thank you all very much for taking part uh, it was great to be with you this afternoon and we'll see you all soon thanks very much bye bye thank you